This conference will now be recorded. All right, we'll call the meeting to order August 29th. 29th. 26th today, right? It's 20. 26th today. Boy, glasses. Good morning, everybody. I want to do a little sound check. We have two of our commissioners that are remote. Uh, Commissioner Lawrenson, can you hear me? Sure can, loud and clear. All right, and uh, Commissioner Stevenson, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, let's start by Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge Allegiance, allegiance. Yeah. 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 to the United States of America, to the Republic of Purchase, and one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, got about one second sound delay there. All right, so I have a little preamble to read. Commissioner, staff, and citizens, since this is a hybrid meeting, some initial comments are appropriate as required by the governor's March 24th proclamation. The Lake Stevens Sewer District has held its commission meetings remotely using the GoToMeeting platform. While this has occurred for more than a year, we are glad to be able to ensure a continuity of business and operations and are excited to be able to move into a hybrid meeting as we safely work back to our normal in-person meeting, meetings. Members of the public who are participating in person or remotely, we are very grateful for your support and patience while we work through this interim way of doing business. As required by the Snohomish Health District, August 10th, 2000, uh, 2021 directive, masks are required regardless of vaccine status while attending meetings in person. Individuals choosing not to wear masks will be asked to leave and join the meeting remotely. Members of the public have been invited to join in person in accordance with CDC and state coronavirus guidelines and via virtual meeting format of the GoTo meeting. Public comment section of our agenda will be handled in the following way. First, comments or questions that were emailed to the sewer district customer service or otherwise received sufficiently in advance of the meeting will be read during the public forum. Second, during the meeting, any remote participant wishing to comment during the public forum may use the chat box feature and you'll be provided the opportunity to comment. Third, in-person participants wishing to comment may indicate that to the board during the public part of the agenda and will be provided the opportunity to comment. We need to do our very best to speak one person at a time so our note taker can take minutes. All right, we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, how do we like the agenda? Any last minute breaking changes or uh gold creek uh dea is not ready for, for approval yet okay so that's under new business d we'll scratch d okay anything else going on? okay I'll um my fellow commissioners um how do you like the agenda i would make a motion that we approve the agenda with the addendum that staff gave about excluding the Gold Creek DEA. All right, we have a uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have an approved agenda. All right, we have consent items uh, A through I. Any comments, concerns? I'll take a motion then. I'd make a motion we approve consent agenda items A through I as submitted I have, and um, fantastic all in favor aye. aye aye all right public forum did we get any comments letters cards no no all right anybody uh, online wish to uh make a comment All right. I look to my right. The gallery is empty. All right. That'll conclude a public forum. Old business. Uh, a. We got a clarification on agenda and consent item approval form uh, from uh, 812 board meeting. So on in trying to prepare the minutes from our last board meeting, there's a bit of confusion on the motion and approval for the. Uh, agenda and then also for the consent items they got a little mixed up so I just want to clarify the board's intention from August 12th was to approve both 
the agenda and the consent item. Okay. Do you want uh, to uh, recommend a vote on that or just verbal I would recommend we just redo the motion and vote from approving those things to okay. make it okay. real clear. All right. So fair enough. And I, I, I recall those being two separate items that were both approved. That's what my recollection is. Um, so uh, fellow commissioners, uh, maybe uh, if you're so inclined, a motion to approve the uh, agenda from 8-12-2021. I would make a motion for the clarification on that old business item. A, that we uh, approve the consent or approve the agenda first that was presented to us on 8 12 2021. Yeah, okay. and I'll motion. second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that takes care of the agenda from August 12th. And let's move to uh, the consent items from August 12th if they're. Uh, we're comfortable with that. I'd take a motion. I'd make a motion. We approve the consent agenda items as presented on 8 12 2021. Very good. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? All Aye. Right. Aye. Okay. That takes care of A. We'll move down to B. Lift stations 4C and 6C proposal for hearing services. Uh, I think we have Rodney up on this one. Yeah, and if, if the commissioner would entertain, I think I'll uh, take a stab at sure, introducing it. And then uh, if you have any questions, Rodney can support. Fantastic. Uh, so this proposal scope includes design, uh, easement, or easement acquisition support, bid support, contract support, construction management and permit support uh, for the uh, con for the decommissioning of lift station 5C, the construction of the gravity line from 5C to 4C and upgrading both 4C and 6C. Um, the cost for these services shall not exceed $343,000 and staff is reviewed the proposal and recommends it for approval. Rodney. Yeah, Rodney, anything you want to add or, or uh, expand upon no. there? No, the details uh, are in the scope. Um, there's several pages there, but but this does you know further the findings as, as supported by the board from the pre-design effort. And so we're really just moving into the next stage now that we have a, a clear path to to a, a desired set of improvements out there. Okay, and consistent with our comprehensive plan that's ten year rolling and, and so forth. Okay, that's I've correct. Read it. Yep, makes sense. Uh, fellow commissioners, comments, questions? No, I'm. Uh, I, I did take a look at it and read through it and 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 saw that it is. Consistent with what we are doing with the proposals of this lift station. So, if Commissioner Stevens doesn't have anything, I'd make a motion to approve the uh, engineering services work for lift stations 4C, 6C, not to exceed $343,000 unless otherwise authorized by the board. Yeah, it looks good to me as well. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it moves. Okay, down to new business, uh, WCIA presentation. So today we have Rob Risco, Risco sorry, uh, with us from the Washington City Cities Insurance Authority to give us a short presentation on uh, what uh, they could probably offer us as far as insurance coverage for the district. Um, and Rob, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Loud and clear. Yes. All right. I will try to get my presentation up on the screen. Start. 
Looks good. Okay, great. My name is Robert Osco. I'm the Deputy Director of WCIA. I've been involved with WCA now for oh, 21 years as either an employee or as a member. I actually worked there from 2000, 2005. I left and started working for uh, Safeco Insurance, but then got recruited down to the city of Auburn. So I actually went back to a member city, served on WCA's executive board, um, and then joined back as an employee three years ago as the deputy director. And the nice thing about WCA is we are not your typical insurance company. We are a interlocal government agency. We were created back in 1981, primarily because public agencies back in the early 80s were uninsurable, i.e. the market couldn't make a profit underwriting government agencies. So a bunch of cities were left trying to figure out what to do and they decided to create their own insurance company. And that's what we are. We are a risk sharing pool. We have over 165 different agencies throughout the state of Washington, and we are only in the state of Washington, and you have to either be a municipality or perform a municipal function like a utility, like a sewer or operating district or a 911 dispatch center. So we only provide those liability coverages throughout the state as well as property insurance. So we are a, both a property and liability carrier. We have over $160 million in assets which is by far the strongest of any risk pool in the state of Washington. And that's important right now because the insurance industry is under tremendous pressure. Uh, it's very cyclical by its very nature where sometimes rates get very expensive. And that's where we're coming into right now is what's called a hard market cycle in the insurance industry. Um, WCA provides the first, oh, I should go over, um, some of the advantages of being in WCA. We are run by our members. We have an executive committee that are comprised of nine members delegates. They are elected by the membership to oversee the operations. Uh, they assist us in avoiding and reducing losses. We have risk management and claim handling. And we also, one of our goals is to try to keep rates very stable. Like I mentioned before, the insurance industry can be very cyclical, where I have to buy reinsurance. We insure the first $4 million in coverage uh, in-house, and then I have to buy excess coverage above that, up to $20 million. Last year, I saw my liability premiums increase by over 83% with less coverage. Um, that's what you get when you go to traditional insurance industries, you get a large swing. Nice part about that is we don't attach to the traditional insurance industry until 10 million because we also have a government entities mutual that we apply to or are a member of. Therefore, our membership didn't see as large of a rate increase as we experienced in the industry. We try to keep things very stable and we have caps in place. So the most anyone's rates can go up or down are limited based upon the actuarial review. And they're very transparent in how we set those rates. We're very cognizant that this is public monies. We're not in it to make a profit. We just have to make sure we have enough money at the end of the day to pay for claims. Uh, and the nice thing about being a member of WCA, we are 21 employees. If there is a coverage determination that needs to be made regarding whether things are covered or not covered, it's made by the executive director, which you would have a direct phone number for. Whereas if you're with an insurance company, I couldn't imagine you ever having the CEO's phone number that you could call up and discuss a claim with. Again, that's one of the benefits of being in a small organization run by a public agency, and we understand public exposure much more so than general industry. And our philosophy is we like to pay what we owe, but we don't always necessarily want to pay what we don't owe because we don't want to be targets for future litigation. Now, it doesn't mean sometimes we won't make financial decisions, what's in the best interest for the pool, but when we make those decisions, we are going to look for your input. We're going to talk to your member, we're going to talk to our members, talk to our delegates to make sure that you're comfortable with the decisions that are being made on your behalf. And some of the coverages we provide, we provide up to $20 million in liability coverage for your 
claims or lawsuits. Liability means someone is suing you or filing a claim that you damaged their property. It could be a sewer backup. It could be a line break. It could be an auto accident with one of the employees that damaged a third party. So again, you have up to $20 million in coverage with us. We provide up to $400 million per occurrence and property coverage, uh, which will cover your assets. So if you have a treatment facility that catches fire, that's where that $400 million would come into place too. And we provide replacement cost coverage for your property. So despite it maybe being undervalued by a million or two on a property schedule, we would still pay for the replacement of that structure should it be needing that repair or replacement cost. We also offer equipment breakdown coverage. That's when you have a generator or lift station that could get damaged through electrical currents or mechanical breakdown. Uh, crime and fidelity is for employee theft and dishonesty. And we also have cyber liability. Cyber liability is a big issue right now, especially for public agencies. It's getting extremely difficult to underwrite by the insurance industry, but we provide that coverage at no additional cost for liability for our members. And we provide up to a million dollars in coverage and up to a hundred thousand in ransomware and extortion coverage. And we also have what's called premise pollution liability. If your um, property were to become polluted and then that would seep or creep over onto third parties, that coverage comes into play to help pick up the cost of that contamination and that will happen. And again, some of the benefits of being in WCA, we have our own in-house claim staff that are dedicated to the agency. Uh, we have four in-house staff as well as field representatives that we can call and contract with. So if there is damage to third party, they can go out there get remedial steps to take place to make sure that the cleanup is being done properly and those third parties are taken care of quickly and efficiently. So that's what you get from an in-house staff, as well as we assign a risk management representative. We understand that you may have questions or concerns regarding um, your operations. So we're here to help provide you best practices approach. Let's say for instance, you're interested in take home vehicles for your employees and you wanted to know what kind of procedures you should have in place, whether it be a release agreement, a harmless agreement, or just some management practices and policies and procedures. We can help you with that to make sure that you're protecting your own assets so you get a dedicated risk management rep that you can bounce questions off of. We also have what's called our pre-defense review. That means if you're looking at taking any type of employment action, maybe against an employee, and you have some questions because personnel law can be very difficult and challenging at times, uh, we will assign a attorney to assist you with that to make sure you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's, not violating any employee rights that they may have under the laws. Again, all designed to help protect your assets and make sure that you're not going to be a target for future litigation. And we also have what's called guidelines and a risk management bulletins and manual that you can review to help you with your day-to-day -day operations, whether it's what do I do if an um, employee wants to have a, oh, I'm trying to think of a good um, sewer district issue, but we have, uh, have a lot of guidelines and procedures to help you with hold harmless agreements, indemnification, contract language when you're contracting with third parties to make sure that you're transferring the risks appropriately. We can review those contracts for the insurance language and indemnification clauses to make sure that those are worded in the best possible way, again, to help protect your own assets. Uh, we also do quite extensive training. We have over, we dedicate over $750,000 annually to our training to help provide that for the membership because again, we are a risk sharing pool. We're in this together and we think the best way to control our losses and to keep rates stable is to hopefully prevent them to be, from the beginning. And that's where we offer different trainings on uh, fleet, personnel, public works, all sorts of different municipal exposures that you may uh, face. We offer what's called like a supervisory boot camp where you have new employees that may get promoted from within the ranks and they may not have supervisory or management experience. So we're trying to give them the best tools possible to educate them what it is now that they're a supervisor or manager and what roles they may play within your organization. And we also provide some risk management reduction grants. You may have a idea to help reduce 
uh, third party claims and you want to uh, buy a piece of equipment or have a training or some sort of tool that you may need that would benefit your agency, you can submit that to the risk management grant committee. And that committee is comprised of other members. So it's not WCA deciding who gets the money, it's the membership that are reviewing those applications and then they can apply or accept those grants and give that money back to the membership. So those are all some of the things that we provide as a risk sharing pool. Um, any questions for me? That's very, uh, very thorough. Well, we're excited. Any, uh, we, think, we think you guys are going to be a great fit for uh, WCIA, so we're excited to have you on board. Awesome. Michael, Gavin, commissioners, any questions? No, I just want to say, you know, I've worked with WCIA in the past, obviously, working for a municipality for many years and had to exercise the pre-defense on a lot of, of issues we had. So uh, very comfortable with WCIA as a, uh, you know, organization for coverage. I would, you know, my my feeling is to move forward and, and authorize staff to to make that happen because I think that um, they meet the needs that we're looking for. Brad, I heard you uh, chime in there for a second. I want to make sure we didn't miss what you wanted to communicate. Yeah, Kevin, thank you for not muting me. Um, uh, and I, it was interesting that, that Rob uh, mentioned uh, the the beginnings of uh, WCIA in, in 1981. In 1981, I was the city attorney of Everett, and uh, we gave uh, some office space temporarily to to Lou Lai, who was the uh, uh, the beginning uh, director of uh, 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 WCIA, and uh, I am a, a, a great proponent of WCIA. Clients of of ours have used uh, or been members of WCIA, and uh, the the proactive approach of WCIA and its uh, excellent coverage. It's uh, uh, as Rob has described the uh, you know the 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 training opportunities, the the uh, interactive approach. Um, it's just it's grown to be such an excellent. Uh, 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 Cooperative and in, in, uh, I want to use the term insurance, but uh, interlocal uh, pool uh, for uh, municipalities. I think it will be a great fit for the district, and uh, so I highly recommend it. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Stevenson. Any comments? I just I think the presentation was very thorough and I like that it comes highly recommended and it's an established company. I think everything looks great. Excellent. We um, just informational at this point? Nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so our current insurance uh, coverage is through August 31st. So we would be uh, seeking WCIA membership for uh, the remainder of 2021 and for 2022, um, if approved by the WCIA board to join the pool. Um, Rob is taking our potential membership to the board this week, um, and then he would be sending me and ILA to sign to join the pool. So I'm speaking from the commissioner's approval uh, for the GM, to sign the ILA with legal review so that we can begin coverage with WCIA. Um, I'll also mention that I did confirm with them that uh, the coverage uh, proposed, the minimum coverage required in the 2005 city assumption agreement is for about $10 million of coverage and what we're um, actually going to be getting is double that at 20 million. So we um, exceed the minimum requirements of our other contractual obligations. All right. 
Any additional questions from my fellow commissioners or potentially a motion? No questions from me, but I would make a motion. We authorize the general manager to enter into an ILA with WCIA as the insurance coverage for the Lake Stevens Sewer District and have it reviewed by legal to ensure that we did dot the I's, cross the T's, but um, to move forward on that. Yeah, and I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So move. All right. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to C, take home vehicle policy. All right. Um, the take home vehicle policy uh, that's in your packet, uh, it's new to the district, but not new to other organizations. So we did uh, review other uh, policies from other sewer districts as well as Snohomish County. This is something that's been discussed at the staff level as well as um, with Commissioner Lawrenceland. And so what the proposal is, is basically a start to a take-home vehicle policy where it's usually intended for those on call or those that may be going out of town for training so they can take a district vehicle home with them and reduce the, the cost for commuting at their own vehicle or that commuting time um, or responding to one location to pick up the on-call vehicle and then going out to the site or things like that. Um, so this just gives a framework for how the district would approve or review those requests by employees. It's not something that would be mandatory for on-call employees to take home a vehicle, but it has their request that gives the framework for how we would approve that request. Um, it has been reviewed by legal. It's also been submitted and reviewed by our union with no objection. And so it's recommended by staff for board approval. Fellow commissioners, any questions or comments? None from myself. I'm pretty versed in some of these policies there. So if Commissioner Stevenson doesn't have any objection to it, I would make a motion to approve the take home vehicle policy for Lake Stevens Sewer District. Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved. That brings us down to D, the 2022 vehicle budget. All right. So uh, we are finding that vehicles now have a very long lead time, up to a year, sometimes more. Um, so the district is asking the commissioners to consider kind of preempting next year's vehicle replacement budget um, and setting that at 170,000. Um, we have to basically order our vehicles that we hope to have delivered next year, this year. Um, and even that will be stretching it in some aspects. So uh, the budget that we're asking for now would replace the treatment plants Dodge Dakota, hopefully with a uh, Ford Lightning uh, electric pickup. And then we need a utility trailer so we can uh, tow our emergency generators around. Uh, and the replacement for the Mitsubishi. Uh, which has a crane, and that's what we currently use to tow our generator around. So, um, yeah, again, staff is asking for a, a preemptive 2022 vehicle replacement budget in the amount of 170000 When does the expenditure happen? It will we'll pay when it's delivered. When it's delivered. Yeah. Okay. All right. So still, the expenditure may happen in 2022. But we need to make the commitment now to be able to actually have it in 2022. Okay. All right. So that's the timing. Timing of the cash might not be any different. Yeah. Yeah. It's just setting the budget now so we can order the vehicles to have delivered by next year. Okay. Fellow commissioners, questions, comments? No. Nope. I'd authorize staff uh, or authorize, make a motion. To authorize staff to go ahead and move forward with the 2022 budget. Um, for the vehicle uh, purchase, they can move that up. So even though it probably won't be paid until 2022. 
I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Moves us down to manager's report. Uh, general manager. All right. The total plant flows right now are at 2.4 million gallons a day, which has been a consistent number lately that I've been selling it. Um, the new gate, uh, which has been a long going project, is uh, they're working on it again today uh, to get that in. We had a fire inspection earlier uh, last month. Um, and there's some new signage that you'll notice down at the big, at the plant. So there's some signs on the buildings as well as the new sign that you can see from the road that looks pretty great. Um, nice reflective metal and, and now you can identify what that place is. Um, there's just a lot of ongoing uh, repairs and maintenance that's happening down at the equipment at the plant. Our plant is aging and so there's a lot of projects going down uh, there. This uh, past week, Jim uh, and Jeff and myself uh, visited Brightwater to see their magnesium hydroxide system and met with the rep there as, as well. Um, you know, learned a lot. Uh, we also had a meeting after that to look at a different type of pH control using, using calcium carbonate. And so we're going to also try and pilot the calcium carbonate to um, make a good comparison of where we want to go to replace the sodium hydroxide that we're using uh, currently. So it was a productive meeting to appreciate Brightwater's uh, help and, and getting us through that. The cybersecurity audit is ongoing. Uh, working really hard on that one. And then we also last week posted the job for the operator for the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, first review of applications is going to be September 2nd, and we have re received some applications so far. So it may take a little while, but uh, it only takes one. So, <laughs> so that's encouraging that we've gotten some already. Uh, last meeting, you had brought up wanting to do a joint meeting with the city council for um, the Puget Sound Nutrient General Permit topic. Um, and I have been in discussions with uh, Kelly Challen over at the city, and they proposed two dates that we could do that workshop on, either September 21st or October 5th. And those are on the normal workshop schedule for city council. So it would be Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Um, if either of those dates do not do, I'd love to know now so that we can uh, line that up with them and get on the schedule. I have already lined up a few speakers to help us out with that. Barry has uh, graciously agreed to join us. Um, Eileen Canola from the Snohomish County, who works a lot with the planning and the growth management act and our comprehensive plan, is also coming. And Jeff Clark will be coming as the representative. So we should have a good, thorough uh, discussion uh, to get everybody aware of what's coming. So. Do either of those dates not work for both? The 21st would be, I'll be remote on the 21st. The okay. 5th would work better for me, but one voice in a chorus. I would say that if we could be in person, if that's what we're doing, I think it works best if we're all in person. So I'd say the October one. I can make either date work. So if we can't, I'll be there. Whatever you guys choose, I'll just plan around it. Yeah, I can be there for either as well. So October 5th sounds like it would work for all of us to be there in person. Excellent. I'll get back with the city and follow up. Thank you. Great. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thus far, uh, we have collected 328.59 ERUs or and have issued 398 permits. Um, Angelina and I did the final walkthrough for Hillcrest, um, and there's just a couple of punch list items, so we should be wrapping up with that one shortly. Um, Angelina and I also completed the final walkthrough on the gravity system and the Mountain View lift station, so uh, Mountain View Phase 1 and Heights should be wrapping up, if not by the end of this week, mid next week. 
um, the uh, we should be issuing the notice to proceed for the lift station 22 motor control project next week. Um, the equipment's finally shipped and there's about a 14 day lead time, but the contractor to keep themselves busy there doing some site prep uh, in anticipation of the, of the equipment. So we're hoping next week to issue the notice to proceed on that. Um, at lift station 14, we've been fighting a high amp draw uh, on our motors there. And uh, recently the crews replaced the impellers there from and switched them from a double vane impeller to a single vane impeller. And it remedied our amp draw and should also remedy the ragging problems. We've had uh, about two or three times a week, we've had to go there and derag the pumps. So, um, so yeah, we're hoping that this will fix that. And then uh, the crews, uh, working on replacing the impellers and balancing the motors at lift station 8C. Uh, we have, uh, we're, we're producing or outputting about a 200 GPM less than we should. And when we pulled the pumps, the impellers were worn there. So um, our contract with Evergreen is kind of dependent on what the output is after we change those impellers. So uh, we're hoping that uh, we'll get that one pump in next week and be able to do a drawdown test to make sure that we are outputting what we should. And that's all I got. It's a lot. Yeah. Busy stuff. Yeah, good. The operations teams have been working awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, moving on to city report. Uh, you did send me over a report that I saw council member Sajan on. Uh, I'll read what Gene sent and then council member. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. So Gene said he was uh, participating in the Special Olympics run today. That's why he and the mayor and council member Peter Shagan weren't available to, to attend. But uh, as far as the city update goes, he said Millsburg is under construction. Uh, the Public Works crew are focused on maintenance, uh, especially over at Frontier Heights Park and turf maintenance. They did have more vandalism at North Cove Park this week, but have two suspects, both of which are minors. And then lastly, Public Works is moving out of City Hall today and into their new office space at the city shop. So that's exciting. Yeah. Council member, anything to add or? Nope, that's about it. We've been just came off hiatus for a month and a half break. So we're just kind of getting back in it and we have a council retreat uh, tomorrow. So kind of get us kick started back in for the stretch of the end of the year. You look well rested and ready to roll. I am. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. Uh, commissioner's reports. Uh, where shall we go? Uh, Commissioner Lawrenson, how about you? Uh, good morning, everybody. Not a whole lot. Just want to say thank you to the staff, as usual, because they do such an awesome job for us and uh, make us all look really, really well. Uh, appreciate the hard work. I know the retreat for us is coming up this next month for those commissioners that can make it. Uh, look forward to it. And if you don't all make it, we'll report back, obviously, some of the things that Roswat is doing for us. So um, just want to say thank you again to everybody. Um, you know, you guys are doing an awesome job and truly appreciate it from the elected standpoint. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Stevenson. Yeah, I would just echo what Dan said about the staff. They work hard all the time to keep everything running smoothly, and I so appreciate all of you. Um, I'm really excited also about moving forward with WCI insurance. I think that's a, a great move on our part. So, um, and I'm looking forward to the Waswood retreat as well. Fantastic. No, and I would just uh, chime in that anybody can run a shiny new plant. It's harder to run an aging plant and aging infrastructure. And that's why we're here, because that's the fun part. The fun part of problem solving, <laughs> right? And what comes our way. So appreciate the work there. All right, that's all. Uh, I think that uh, takes care of our agenda. Any executive session today? Yes, for probably 15 minutes. Okay, we're going to keep it in that 15 minutes. Uh, 
we'll do 10, okay? I even like that a little better. Um, and uh, topic today? Uh, Brad, Brad's do you want to? Yeah. I'm not sure which one. So um, the, are you ready for me, uh, Kevin? Yes. Yep. Okay, the commission will now recess into executive session that will last uh, until, let's say, uh, 9.55, just to be safe, uh, or up to 9.55. Um, the uh, topic for the executive session is to meet with legal counsel uh, to discuss contract negotiations, discussion of which in public would disadvantage the district at the conclusion of the executive session, the commission will return to its regular session and the meeting will be adjourned. There will not be any action taken based upon the discussion in executive session, nor will there be any announcement made based upon the discussion in executive session. So after a minute, to uh, get uh, the uh, meeting uh, set up, the, uh, the executive session will commence. All right, thanks everybody. This conference will now be recorded. All right, we've exited uh, executive session and uh, back in a general session. Uh, as mentioned previously, there's no decisions uh, to be made um, other than decision to conclude our session today. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Happy trails, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>